Hi, my name is Burton Thompson with Thompson RV in Pendleton, Oregon. And today we're going to do an orientation on a Blackstone Titanium Series 260 RLS. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is leveling the trailer. So when you get to your camping location, you want to level the trailer side to side before you unhook the truck or the tow vehicle. So if you put it in there and it's level side to side, that's great. If it's off a little bit, you want to roll the tires, both tires, up onto blocks of some kind and level it side to side first. We typically put bubble levels up on the front corner so you can see how close you are and things like that. So if you need to, roll up onto blocks, get it level side to side first, chalk the wheels one way, shape or form to keep the trailer from possibly rolling when you unhook the tow vehicle. Now front to back is done with the electric power tongue jack up there. Um, so now that you're all level, wheels are chalked, you can then run down your stabilizer jacks. On this particular titanium series, the jacks are electric, so you can see our video on how to use your uh, remote control uh, to run your, your system. They also have backup switches in the uh, passenger side luggage compartment up front. So you're leveled, wheels are chalked, the rig is stabilized, now you can just run your slide outs out and you are basically there camping. The rest of it is uh, your, your hookups like power and water and so forth. On this particular model, model the uh, power hookups are right in the back. So you take your power cord, line up the teeth, give it a little quarter turn, and then thread a gray ring on there. That'll hold that electrical connection nice and snug. Now with this particular rig, it's 30 amps. You always want to go direct to RV 30 amp power to run the air conditioner. If you ever adapt down to lesser power, you can do everything with the air conditioning. Um, we also have satellite hookups. That's the DSS hookup here. This is an external satellite hookup for a portable satellite dish. Uh, the unmarked one is cable television. And then you also have your city water connection right here. So if you go to that RV park and you're hooked up and you have, you have water, you can bring that water hose up right here. Just use a water pressure regulator so that you're bringing in a safe amount of water pressure into the vehicle. I like to hook that up at the source so that the water hose and everything is regulated and safe going in. Um, the outside shower is back here. You have hot and cold water and a 60 inch hose in here to rinse things off outside. We equip these with the uh, mountain storage package which comes with a two inch hitch receiver on the back and a 250 pound total uh, rating on that. Spare tire is all pumped up to proper pressure and all ready to go here. All these outdoor RV rigs are a full walk on roof. Um, you can walk on the whole thing and, and every now and then you just want to check or have somebody check the roof sealant. You just want to do preventative maintenance and make sure that the trailers are staying sealed up uh, and prevent any sort of leak before it ever starts. So a couple times a year at least, just have somebody check the roof, uh, look around the seams and the vents and just make sure that that Dicor rubber roof sealant is staying right where you need it to be. Um, just touch up as needed, you can just touch up anything that looks questionable. Now anything on the sides is just regular rubber silicone, so they would use a clear rubber silicone on anything on the exterior sides that, that they would like to keep sealed up. So we'll move around the door side here, and I'll just go around in a circle so I don't pass anything. Uh, here is the water heater. Now the water heater is gas or electric, so from inside the vehicle you can just pick gas or electric. So if you're in a park and you're plugged into power, you can turn it on electricity. If you're off in the mountains or somewhere, you can turn it on and heat it with propane gas. Uh, but out here, I just like to show on this model, they do have uh, two reset buttons. It's not common or likely to need these, but there's an electric reset and a gas reset. If you've just exhausted everything and it's not going, just remember that you do have a couple resets outside. The drain plug is down here at the bottom. Uh, it is an, an anode rod that the minerals eat away at to prolong the life of the tank. So every few years, if that does get kind of chewed up, you just replace it. It's doing its job to make the tank last as long as it can. Uh, but that is the drain plug, and they give you a really convenient on-off switch over here in the corner that will make sure that the electric element is off for good if you ever drain it. And if the tank is empty and somebody turns it on, you uh, are still protected. But really, nothing to do outside on the water heater. Just mainly wanted to show you where to drain it if you ever want to winterize it or uh, what have you there. Um, here's where you fill the fresh water tank. So you just put the, the water hose in there and fill it about half speed. You want to make sure that that air is venting out as that water is filling up. So it's good to go about half speed and make sure it's venting properly. When the water pours out, it's all full. You can also go check the monitor panel. 
panel inside and make sure that it lights up and, and reads in fact full and we'll talk about that on the inside. You have a couple 110 outlets out here. If the vehicle's plugged in, you can run uh, power off to something outside. You also have outside speakers uh, right on the stereo face. There's zones one and two, so one's inside, two's outside. Vent fan for the cook stove. Um, you can just push these tabs and open up that fan, or that, that vent, I should say. And when you turn on your exhaust fan over the stove, it'll just vent right outside. Probably good to just snap those closed when you drive down a dusty road or, or what have you, keep that thing uh, uh, shut down for travel. This is just the refrigerator ventilation. Just don't block this for anything. It is bringing air across the back of the refrigerator and out through the roof. Uh, but mainly just a vent, just keep everything out of the way of that. You have uh, furnace access and furnace exhaust out here when that furnace is running. Uh, I do like to talk about the tires and wheels, especially on a brand new trailer. We do like you to check the lug nuts a few times as you initially break in the, the trailer. So, um, you know, the owner's manual states every 50 miles for a couple hundred miles. And, and basically what they're getting at is they just want you to uh, check those lug nuts initially, make sure they're breaking in properly, and then it becomes kind of a seasonal thing after that. Um, and always check your manuals for, for those things, of course. Um, tire pressure, this particular tire is an 80 PSI tire. Uh, so we do run that at that, you know, 70, 75 cold uh, range, somewhere in that ballpark. You also have easy lube axles. You can pop this little center cap off. There's a little rubber grommet that comes off and there's a grease circ fitting. So you can repack the wheel bearings um, after the appropriate mileage and things like that. Um, we'll probably do a special video on the X4 package and wheel pack and stuff like that. It'd be a good video for us to do. We can go a little more in depth on that. But all the shackles underneath also have zerk fittings and bronze bushings instead of plastic. So all the best stuff that you can get underneath this, this vehicle. So we'll continue to move up towards the front here. Um, this is equipped with an external solar port, so you can hook up a portable solar panel, plug it in, it's literally plug and play, just plug it in. The portable panel will have a charge regulator built into it and just regulate and, and trickle charge the batteries from the sunlight. They're also all roof uh, wired for up to three panels um, and already basically, again, plug and play system for that. Um, up in the top of this compartment here, they have the backup cranks for one for the electric jack just in case and then a backup crank handle for the electric power tongue jack in the front um, and then up in this cubby here we can slide this door out of the way and we have a battery disconnect so we have a we also have a video on uh, battery disconnects and, and how to uh, you know leave your vehicle for uh, storage occasions um, and then the uh, switches are in there for the electric jacks. The separate little light switch in that cubby turns on a light right up underneath here above the batteries. So you can illuminate the batteries if you're looking at those at night. Um, this vehicle has 12-volt uh, sealed maintenance-free batteries. So there is no maintenance to these at all. Basically just keep a charge coming to them, whether that be plugged in, uh, you know, the vehicle driving down the road, towing it, um, or solar panel or something like that. So. We can do a little more in-depth on batteries in another video, too. I'm getting lots of good ideas for videos here. Uh, propane is right up front here. Um, this is an automatic changeover regulator. So if both of these bottles are full and open, the little pointer right here, there's a faint little pointer on one side, and that's telling us we're running on this left-hand bottle first. It's green here, it means we're getting propane from that tank, everything's great. But when that first tank runs empty, this dial is gonna go red here, telling us the first one's empty, and internally it's gonna start pulling off the next bottle. So in the middle of the night, if the heat's running, you don't have to come out here and change anything, it's gonna do it internally. But it's gonna stay pointing red to the empty one so there's no confusion on which one you need to fill up. So then you can come out and switch it over. It's gonna go back to green and then you can go fill that tank up. Now we like to start on the left-hand bottle first so that if you in fact run that one empty, you still have gas over here for your barbecue fitting that these are equipped with. This is a high pressure barbecue fitting and this vehicle comes with a 12 foot hose and you, so you're before the regulator so you can run high pressure to a Weber um, or a Camp Chef or any of these high pressure barbecues. Any of them that take a green bottle direct, you can hook up to this with that hose that's provided. So we like to save this bottle for cooking and start on that other side. This vehicle also has a retractable toy lock located right up underneath the A-frame on the passenger side. Uh, that's a really nice handy cable that you can pull out, lock up a generator or bicycles, and it just sells for tracks back into that little housing. The tongue jack, there's a light in the front, and then just simply extend and retract to go up and down. 
And then if, if in case of failure, there is a spot to manually crank them, so there's always a backup for all those things. The, uh, the move around here to the uh, sewer dump location, it's right directly underneath the light, and we don't have to duck down and, and do this today. Uh, but right underneath the light is the sewer cap, and shoulder width apart, there's a black handle and a gray handle. The black, hunters, the se black handle's the septic tank, uh, toilet tank, and the gray handle's the gray water like your shower and sinks. So if you're just gonna dump them one time, you always wanna dump the black tank first. You can then use the uh, black tank flush out and give that tank a good rinsing. You just wanna have that black tank valve pulled open so that when you're spraying it, it's rinsing it out and leaving all at the same time. Shut that stuff down, do gray last, kind of flushes out your sewer hose. Remember to never leave your black tank open if you're in a park or somewhere hooked up to a hose. You do need to let that toilet tank fill up and then dump it in volume so everything pulls out of there uh, a lot cleaner. Um, and that is basically the exterior of the Blackstone 260 RLS Titanium. We're gonna to move to the interior.